Hello, I'm Dr. Jennifer Moses, and this is the video walking you through the syllabus for Psychology 66 Online, Section 12732, in the winter of 2020. Um, welcome to the course. Uh, essentially, I just want to highlight some important parts of the syllabus. The syllabus in its entirety is posted on the Canvas website, and you are encouraged, indeed assigned, the task of carefully reviewing the syllabus so that you can be fully aware of all the course policies and everything that is expected of you to do well in the course. Um, and that is the first thing I do want to tell you is almost every question you might have about course policies, due dates, um, where my office is, all those sort of nitty gritty basic course essentials, everything is in the syllabus. Um, it's a kind of a long syllabus because I've tried to put all the important information in one place. So please, please do check the syllabus whenever you have a class question. So the first page of the syllabus is what we're looking at right here. And on it, you'll find our textbook. We use Sherry Diesler's Becoming a Critical Thinker, which is published by Pearson, um, the P Pearson Education. This is in its seventh edition, and it's and it's brand new as of this year. Um, it's actually an e-text. What you'll do is you'll purchase um, the text through Pearson's Revel service. Um, they try to like have a whole classroom incorporated um, into their textbook, but we're not going to use that. Um, rather, we're just using the textbook portion of the um, of their online service. So you're just this, and they don't offer a hard cover of the seventh edition. So uh, if you want to be fully abreast of the required course readings, you will need to purchase access to the e-text through Pearson's Rebel service. There, uh, the last time they had a physical copy of this book um, was the sixth edition, um, which are still available. You can still buy them out there uh, used. You can buy them out there used uh, through Amazon. I think our bookstore may have some. Our bookstore actually does have um, uh, copies of the access codes for the Revel service. Um, and if you do want to buy a sixth edition, uh, you're welcome to do so. Most of the information is really similar. You're just going to be reading really dated examples because it was published in 2000. 2012. So um, because it's a critical thinking class, there, there's political examples and pop culture examples, and they're going to be um, just a little old and a little dated uh, if you choose to purchase the sixth edition. You'll be thinking, wow, uh, all the way back in 2012, huh? Think of all the things that have happened in the world since 2012. Um, the seventh edition is going to have great examples, very much updated. And the other nice thing about the seventh edition is because it's an e-version, um, you can access it anywhere. You can access uh, Pearson's Revel service from anywhere. So, um, but either way, either way, you should be in pretty good shape for the required reading. As I mentioned, we do have a course website. Um, it is our, and everything in the class is on the home, is on the Canvas website. Let me say that again. Everything in the course everything is on the course website. Um, although we do have an e-text um, that is assigned reading, that's not how you're going to complete any assignments. You will complete no assignments um, in the e-text. You will complete all assignments, all assignments, using the Canvas website. There you will find um, my lectures, the lecture notes, all assignments, quizzes, exams, all of that is on the Canvas website. And hopefully you've already been there and have checked out the course website. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm uh, Dr. Jenny Moses. Uh, you can call me Dr. Jenny. Uh, I have a PhD in experimental psychology, uh, experimental and quantitative psychology. So that's my background. And um, I'm here to be a guide for you in learning this critical thinking material. I do have office hours during the winter session. They're Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to noon. Um, but because it's an online class, uh, I like to have my office hours uh, also be online. And so what I ask is if you want to meet during those 10 to noon office hours, just let me know the day before. Shoot me an email the day before and say, hey, I want to uh, meet with you um, over ConferZoom, which is this great, very easy to use um, platform right there on Canvas um, where you and I can actually see each other face to face and chat with each other about any um, uh, course um, issue you may be having. Um, and I can also make in-person appointments if you feel it's really pressing. Although ConferZoom is pretty great uh, to meet with students. So just uh, do email me um, the day before to uh, set up an appointment to meet during those Tuesday, Thursday office hours. 
I prefer to be contacted through the Canvas inbox because I like students to just access everything on Canvas. You can email me at my official LACCD or Pierce College email addresses, um, but I get a lot of emails there and not just from students. So if you want to get a response from me more quickly, please do uh, access that Canvas inbox and message me through there. This is a three-unit transferable class, and I'll let you go ahead and read all about the course description. The second page um, has a bunch of other little things, like the prerequisites, there aren't any, and what, what you'll be expected to be able to do once you leave the class, and also my teaching philosophy. I essentially try to be a very non-scary type person. Um, I'm here to answer any of your course questions, um, so please do reach out and email me if you find the material confusing. Some of the material is very accessible. Uh, it's things you've heard before, like the media or, uh, you know, advertising, but some of it's a little strange, like um, deductive reasoning. So if there's ever a topic that you find challenging, don't fall behind. Reach out and let me know right away so you and I can have a conversation and help you get back on track, uh, get back on track conceptually. So do reach out to me. Um, the Canvas inbox is great. Um, I usually get back to students within 24 hours, um, definitely Monday through Thursday. Uh, but if you email over the weekend, sometimes it takes me a little longer to get back to you. Um, but during the regular week, um, I'm definitely available and we'll get back to you right away. So the rest of page two is all about the class requirements called requisites, which is just a fancy word for how to get the grade you want. The most important part of this class are the recorded lectures. I cannot stress this enough. Um, many classes are textbook heavy, right? Most of the material in the class is covered in the textbook. And that's, uh, and that's true in a, a lot of classes. But in this class, although everything, most of what we're covering is also covered in the textbook, m the core content of the class meaning what you'll be tested on in the exams and what you'll be talking about in the forums will be based on the video lectures recorded by me. Um, because I have yet to figure out a way of teaching a class without actually teaching it myself. Um, so I've created the exams, I've created the forum activities, and so I lecture on all the topics with my expertise. And so if you want to do well in the class, you have to watch the video lectures. It's kind of like expecting to do well in a class, in an in-person class, if you never show up. If you don't watch the video lectures, you won't pass the class. It's really as simple as that. Um, because everything that's going to be on the exams is covered in the video lectures. So you'll know exactly what to be prepared for if you watch the video lectures. And you'll be very lost if you don't. So please, please, please watch the video lectures. Um, there are 25 lectures, uh, much like you would go to class every single day in an in-person class. You would go to class for three hours, Monday through Thursday in an in-person winter session. In our, my class, you uh, in the online version, you watch um, around three to four lectures a week. They're about an hour-ish. Um, some of them are less than an hour. Some of them are a trifle longer, but most of them are right about an hour. Um, so it's a really similar amount of time that you're uh, watching the material as you would have in an in-person class. The nice thing about the online videos is you can stop me and go get a snack or stop me and write down a question. Rewind me to hear what I had to say one more time. Um, so that's a really uh, beneficial thing. The downside is you have to actually choose to watch the lectures. Um, and if you don't, you won't do well. So please do watch the lectures as they are assigned. Every day, there's usually one lecture you're supposed to watch. Um, uh, or, or excuse me, uh, every day there's a certain number of lectures you're supposed to watch. And so it's just really, really important uh, that you watch them as they are assigned. Um, and I'll show you uh, on the timeline in a little bit exactly how many lectures you can expect on a week-to-week -week basis. And to help you in watching the lectures, I've actually created some PowerPoint notes for you to help guide you in the lectures. I encourage you to print them out and have them available to you um, as you're watching the lectures to take your own notes. Much like in an in-person class, you would need to take notes of everything the professor has to say. You should be taking notes of everything I have to say in, you, in that video format. And so I've created those PowerPoint lectures for you so you can take notes on everything that I have to say. And I, and I strongly encourage you to print them out and have them ready so that you can actually take physical notes on the material as I'm lecturing. 
And those are available also on the Canvas website. Everything is on the Canvas website. So watch the lectures and you'll do really well in the class, promise. There will be one term paper, a five page term paper uh, due at the end of the, of, of the semester and a detailed rubric on exactly what is required for that five page, um, what's called a literature review is uh, available on Canvas. It's in APA format, um, which means American Psychological Association format. And I give you some guides on uh, uh, some online resources for knowing exactly what APA format looks like. It's very, very different from MLA or, or the Chicago School School or some other formats you may have encountered in an English class, it's very different from that. So it's important, and it's really the gold standard in science writing, in um, social science writing, people use APA. So because this is a critical thinking class, which is grounded in the social sciences, you really do need to uh, know APA format. So moving right along. There will also be short quizzes that cover the textbook, that cover that Sherry Diesler becoming a critical thinker, um, the specific examples from the textbook, the specific definitions from the textbook, um, and there's 12 total quizzes that you'll take over the course of the winter term. So between two and three every week, um, you'll take a short quiz um, that just covers a given chapter. Uh, each quiz covers one chapter um, in, from the textbook and they're open book. You can take them as often as you want uh, to increase your score. Every time you take a quiz, you'll see new items, um, but uh, if you take them again and again and again, you'll notice some of the same items coming up, and so they're also untimed, and so they're just to make sure that you're keeping up with the reading. Um, but Again, whether you have the sixth or seventh edition of the book, um, you should do pretty well on these quizzes and not have any problem with them. They're not terribly challenging. Um, they're, they're just to encourage you and make sure that you're doing the reading because they'll touch on some examples that I don't cover in the lecture. So they just make sure that you're actually doing that reading as we go. There also will be five forum discussions between one and two a week over the course of the winter, um, and they will cover the things that we've discussed in the video lectures. So if you haven't watched the video lectures, you'll be pretty confused about how to take part in the forums. So it is really important that you've watched the lectures to prepare yourself for participating in the forums. So I encourage you to read the specifics about when they're due, but essentially, um, uh, there'll be some prompt that I give you. You'll answer the prompt and then you'll reply to one of your classmates for full credit. And as long as your response is thoughtful, doesn't have to be perfect or anything, but as long as it's a thoughtful, real response, um, and as, as long as your re reply to a peer, one of your classmates is also thoughtful, um, then you will get full credit right? Uh, you'll get full credit. So they're held over a two-day period. On day one, you'll post your own answer to the question, and on day two, uh, you'll respond to one of your classmates. There are also exams, uh, formal long exams, much like you would take in, over in an in-person class, a nice long exam that would take most of the period. Um, there are three lecture exams, and then one cumulative final. And I call them lecture exams because they only cover material that has been discussed in the video lectures. And some of the things that are in the video lectures are not covered in the textbook. Let me make that clear again. A lot of what we cover in the lectures is not covered in the textbook. Of course, there's overlap between the lectures and the textbook, but I'll, I'll talk about examples that are not covered in the textbook. We'll go over research studies not covered in the textbook. Um, and so to make your job a little easier, I promise that if it's not in the video lecture, it won't be on the exam, which means in order to do well on the exams, that's right, you have to watch the video lectures. Um, so please do uh, do that. Um, also something to keep in mind, even though the short quizzes, the short five point quizzes are, um, are uh, untimed, uh, un, uh, they're uh, open book, you know, they're, they're open book, everything. The exams are not. The longer exams are closed book, closed note, closed internet. And to encourage um, academic honesty, we do use Proctorio in this class, which means um, you must have a working webcam that takes both video and sound. You must have the um, internet browser Chrome, and you must have some sort of school or government issued ID. That means a college ID, a high school ID, a California ID, um, um, a passport, uh, a, 
a green card, something that it has your picture on it um, that uh, indicates who you are from either a school or from a government agency to ensure that people are being academically honest during these closed book um, exams. <clears throat> and they again, they cover only that le lecture material. Um, and you'll take these exams over a three-day period. Uh, they're essentially, for the three shorter exams, the ones that are... Uh, uh, not the cumulative final, they open up on Saturday and then they close Monday evening. So you'll have all weekend and then all day on Monday to take the exams. And um, then the final exam you'll have um, from Saturday until that following Thursday. So you can choose any time in that period to take the exam. I also have a uh, exam replacement policy that's actually discussed right here. Um, I can't offer makeup exams because once that window to take the exam is closed, I can't reopen it in order to maintain exam security. Um, so as a result, um, your cumulative final grade can replace a missed exam or can replace a low exam. Let's say you didn't do so great. You got a C on one of the exams. Um, that just means if you get an A on the final, then that C will become an A instead. Uh, so it's so something to keep in mind um, uh, moving forward. I also have a section of the syllabus that goes into great detail all about Proctorio. Um, you, essentially, you need stable high-speed internet. It's an online class. I, hopefully that's just a given that you have access to stable high-speed internet. Uh, you have to have a private environment to take exams, so can't take the exams in a Starbucks, unfortunately. Um, you'll have to have a working webcam that takes both video and sound and either a uh, school or government-issued ID. Um, so things to keep in mind. Most students, the vast majority of students, have absolutely no problem using Proctorio. Um, however, uh, Occasionally, there are little glitches, so I actually give you extra time in the exam compared to what students would get in an in-person class. In an in-person class, most students get between an hour and 15 and an hour 20 minutes. You actually get additional time beyond that in this class, uh, to, just in case there are any technical problems. If you have problems with Proctorio and problems accessing the exam, you have to contact Proctorio. Uh, because the issue is always Proctorio. Um, if it says that you need a password to access an exam, a long exam, then that's a problem with Proctorio and you need to contact Proctorio. If, you, if your internet gets interrupted and you get logged out of the exam, Proctorio is going to have to get you back in. So I actually have the contacts uh, information right here for Proctorio, right here. Uh, once you've installed Proctorio, there's gonna be a little chat icon in the upper, uh, the upper right of your screen, or you can just call them. And um, there's usually a live person there right away and they can help get you back into the exam if you should run into any technical issues. Um, but again, most students have no problem uh, using Proctorio, especially if you do ensure that you have stable high-speed internet. Um, that's really uh, the only glitch most students run into is A, being asked for a password, there shouldn't be one, or B, um, uh, uh, you have an internet problem and then you get logged out and then Proctorio has to help you get back in. So grades. So to summarize, there are short quizzes, five question quizzes that cover the textbook, uh, the Sherry Deesler uh, Becoming a Critical Thinker. There are five forum activities where you'll be discussing some topic with your classmates. Um, there are long ex longer exams, uh, uh, with uh, 50, 50 points of questions. Um, and then there's a research term paper. That's how you're going to earn your grades. That's how, uh, all there is to it. So if you actually add up the number of points in the class, there at the, at the end of the class, there's going to be 350 points. That's going to represent 100%. But then I also have 15 extra credit points structured into the course. So Canvas is actually going to think that there's 365 points in the class, which means Canvas percentages are almost always going to be an underestimate of your grade. It's going to indicate that you're not doing as well as you actually are. Because 15 points is actually a nice little chunk of extra credit when the class is only out of 350.
So keep that in mind that if you do all, if you do the five forums, if you do the term paper, if you do the 12 short quizzes, if you do the three exams, um, if you got a hundred percent on everything, hypothetically speaking, not that anybody will, but if, if you got a hundred percent, you would actually have 365 points in canvas. Um, but when I sit down to do your grades, I evaluate you out of only 350 points. Um, so so do your work because doing your work uh, earns you extra credit. It's actually just structured into the class. Um, and it works sort of like this. Here's an example. Uh, let's say Claudia at the end of the semester, she's, you know, missed a quiz or two, um, took part in all the forums, you know, got a B on her paper um, and did okay on all the exams. And she ended up with 290 points in the class. Canvas will tell her that she has a 79% because 290 divided by 365 is 79%. But because I know that these that 365 includes those 15 extra credit points that are just structured into the class's regular assignments, I know that she has actually 290 points out of 350 or an 83%. So the total number of points that Canvas shows her is accurate. It says 290, but Canvas thinks there's more points in the class than there are because there's 15 extra credit points structured into the class. So there's something to keep in mind. And so here is how then grades will be outlined, will be assigned. If you have 90% of 350, it's an A. That's 315 points. If you have 80% of 350, that's two, that's that's a B because that's and that's 280 points. If you have 70% of 350, that's a C with 245 points. And here's where those points come from. The five forum activities are worth five points each. So five multiplied by five points multiplied by five forum activities should be 25 points. But I've actually made five of those points extra credit right? So 20 points goes towards the total of 100% of 350. There are 12 online exams worth five points each. So 12 times five is 60. So that means there's 10 extra credit points by taking the 12 online exams. I've taken 10 of those quiz points and made them extra credit. The term papers were 30 points, each of the long exams was worth 50, and the final exam was worth 100. So all one of the forums is considered extra credit and two of the quizzes are considered extra credit. Um, so make sure to do them all because then you'll have some nice extra credit um, structured into your grade. Um, and again, you can make sure to get 100% on the forum activities by simply participating um, in good faith and replying to a peer. And you can take the online quizzes as often as you want until you get five full points. And then you'll have 15 points of extra credit at the end of the semester, which is great. Please don't cheat. That's what this next page is all about, page six. Um, essentially what ends up happening uh, in an online class is students think they can somehow get around Proctorio um, and then they end up engaging in academic dishonesty that I can detect. Just don't do it. Treat the, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it to get a zero on the exam um, because you tried to cut a corner. The other thing is students often will sometimes go to the internet to find answers to like the forums or they go to the internet to find ants uh, to find um, like papers. Don't do it because you'll get a zero and a zero is a powerful thing. You get no points for that activity. Better to get a poor grade than no grade than zero. Right. Plus, I have to fill out paperwork and it goes on your record and all that just sounds like a drag. So please, please, please uh, do your own work. Do not use the Internet as your guide. Um, do your own work and think your own thoughts and everything will be fabulous. Um, because we do interact with each other over forums, the next page um, is just about being kind to each other in the online forums. Be respectful um, with your with your classmates as well as with me over the forums and also over email. Be respectful and treat the academic environment as a professional one because it is. The next section is about special service accommodation. If you are going to uh, most students who need uh, accommodations 
in the online classes get automatic extended time on their exams. But do email me to let me know to look out for your accommodation letter. Otherwise, I may miss it and then not give you that extra time on the exams. Um, if there's some special software or um, uh, other accommodation where you'll be required to take them in person in special services, uh, you do need to let me know before each and every uh, exam, 48 hours uh, minimum before you intend on taking it in special services. So I can have a hard copy over there waiting for you. But really that that's very uncommon. Um, usually students just need extra time and because they're already taking it in a quiet private environment. Um, and that can be accommodated through Canvas automatically as long as you let me know um, to look for your accommodation letter from special services. Um, my drop policy is pretty strict in the first week of the class. Because it's an online class and you have to be self-motivated to do well, you just have to be, um, students who miss any of the assignments in the first week are dropped from the course. Let me say this again. Students who miss any assignments in the first week are dropped from the course, um, A, to make room for other students who might want to add, um, and B, students who miss assignments in the first week are just generally not successful because you have to be self-motivated and you have to be focused in an online class because there's no person reminding you to log in. And um, if you can't be with it the first week, I just know from experience, you're not going to be successful as the course goes on. Um, and it's best that you drop now. And so I do drop students. I exclude students who miss assignments in the first week. So make sure to do them. Please, please, please. Um, um, but then after that, generally, it's your responsibility to drop yourself. Um, although I do reserve the right to drop students who just like start missing all their work. Um, so just stay engaged. Um, if you are planning, uh, the next section is all about religious observances. And if there's going to be a religious uh, observance that falls specifically on a due date, um, uh, you just have to notify me so that you and I can work out a reasonable accommodation. It's not automatic, so you just need to um, reach out to me to discuss what is a reasonable accommodation. Um, and the specifics of when to email me are right there in the syllabus. Which leads us to page eight, which is the specific um, uh, plans for the week. Uh, as you can see in week one, uh, you watch about one lecture a day. Um, that's it. Much like you would watch, uh, go to attend lecture in person. Uh, it's the same thing here. You would just like you would attend one lecture every day in an in-person class. You're going to watch one lecture a day in this online class. Um, that's the nature of winter. It's really compressed. Uh, the first day is just watching the syllabus video. That's me, as well as a short introduction of 23 minutes. Day two, you'll watch one hour long argument video. Uh, and then day three, you'll watch an hour long uh, video on values and ethics. Day four is a little meatier because it's about deduction and deduction is a kind of a meatier topic. So it's a little longer, an hour and 36 minutes. Um, so it actually is less time than you would spend in, um, in an in-person lecture setting over a five week, um, a five week course. But uh, the way I figure it is, uh, you can't ask questions, right? Because uh, or you, you can, but you have to ask them over email. So even though the information is compressed, um, you're only about watching an hour of lecture a day, you've got to take the time to write down your questions and reach out to me um, because that's the other time that you need to be spending um, in addition to taking the quizzes and participating in the forums. As you can see, we've got uh, essentially one quiz a day Monday through Thursday, and then Thursday and Friday, we spend time on a forum. And then the first exam is open from Saturday to that following Monday. And so in week two, um, there's no new lecture on Mondays because I want you just to focus on uh, taking the exam if you haven't taken it over the weekend. So you have all day on Monday to take the exam. Then on, day, on Tuesday, there's actually two lectures to watch. Two lectures to watch. Um, uh, one is about an hour and the other is about an hour and a half. And then on Wednesday, there's one lecture to watch. And then on Thursday, again, only one lecture to watch. And as you see, there's about one quiz due every day. And then we're going to have a forum on Thursday and Friday. And then the second exam is open from Saturday to Monday. And that second exam, you have all day Monday to take it. Starting on Tuesday, we have two lectures to watch, but they're both short. They're only about 45 minutes. And then on Wednesday, there's a 30-minute lecture from me, and then we watch kind of an older video 
called Killing Us Softly. Um, they're probably going to update this video pretty soon, but we're at the tail end of the lifespan of this video, unfortunately. But I do think it's still pretty relevant. Uh, but I, I actually think there's a silver lining to this video. Um, much of the concerns that the woman has in this video, I think, are actually getting better um, nowadays. So um, that will be an interesting discussion to have. Um, and probably will be an incorporated into our discussion of the videos. How has this changed in the last 10 years since the video was made? Um, uh, and so then you can see on Thursday, we watch two videos. So you watch between one and two videos a day, um, but it's never longer than you would have ever spent in an in-person lecture. And the nice thing is, is you can watch them whenever you want. Watch them in your PJs. Stop and start me. And then, but notice in the third week, we actually have two forum activities, one that happens over Tuesday and Wednesday, and the other one that happens over Thursday and Friday. And then again, exam three open from Saturday to Monday. And then on, and then Tuesday, we'll have one lecture. On Wednesday, we'll have one lecture. On Thursday, we'll have two smaller lectures and then a forum activity uh, from Thursday to Friday. Um, only uh, two quizzes though in week four. And then week five, uh, there's actually no new material. We cover all of the meaty, substantive material in those first four weeks. And then you kind of have that last week of the class to um, study and prepare for the, fi the cumulative final exam and uh, finalize your research paper. Um, and that's the flow of the class. Uh, pages 11 and 12, or 11 rather, is uh, a shorter, condensed version of our calendar using a calendar format, January, February, because um, kind of just having a visual overview. As you can see, there's something due almost every day. Uh, because again, it's a compressed five-week class. So it's a class you kind of have to stay engaged in. Um, something due almost every day of the class. So log in every day. Um, and then um, our last week, we just have the final exam due on Thursday and the final paper due on Wednesday. And the last page of the final are just uh, general information about the college. This should really be in every professor's uh, syllabus. So I invite you to look at the, these specifics, like the winter calendar, um, as well as counseling services, assist.org, um, career center, every, basically a bunch of information unique to Pierce. All right, before I, I sign off, I am going to uh, go ahead over to the Canvas website to have you take a quick tour. And here we have the Canvas website, as you would see it. Over here, we have some quick links to the various parts of the class. This is the home page, and everything in the class has been organized right here on the home page. Um, you can get a uh, and over here on the right are some things. This is called uh, your, uh, this is like the quick to-do list that Canvas creates for you. Um, and you can actually delete some things from here as you do them. It essentially tells them the things you're supposed to be doing. So here is how you, here's a couple announcements that I posted uh, for you to look at. And you can see here, there's announcements right here. If you want to just look at all of my announcements, it tells you that there is a quiz coming up and it's going to be due. And once you complete it, you can actually check this X to get rid of it and go, yes, I already did this and get rid of it. Uh, here's another quiz that's due on, the, on that Tuesday. It's the proctorial practice quiz. Here, it's ungraded, so it's not a part of your grade, but it is assigned um, because I want to make sure everyone can use Proctorio. On Wednesday is quiz number two, which covers a specific chapter. And then we see forum activity and then another quiz. So as you do the various assignments and um, engage in the various activities in the class, you can delete them over here. What isn't over here are the video lectures, um, which are, of course, the core component of the class. So please, please, please make sure to watch the video lectures by scrolling down. That's right. We'll show you, show you that in a second. So right up here up top, I just have a bunch of reminders of things you're supposed to be doing. And the most important thing is to watch the lectures. This week, we need to watch the syllabus video, the introduction, the arguments, the values, and the deduction lecture videos. Then after you've watched those, um, you can start taking, uh, after you've watched the relevant video and read the relevant chapter, then you can start doing the quizzes and the forums and such. To scroll down a little further, notice how I'm scrolling, right? I'm scrolling down. Um, you can see we have some general resources, like here's the syllabus. Here is what I like to call the Q&A forum. It basically answers all your class questions. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to posting to the forums. Here's a guide to the homepage, one that we're on right now. 
this is how you know if you're ready for an online class. It's actually a short quiz that you can take. Here's a guide for writing an academic email so you can be professional. Here's a Proctorio student guide if you're feeling any kind of nervousness about using Proctorio to take exams. And then here's the Proctorio practice quiz that um, I do want you to take right away to make sure that your unique computer won't have any trouble using, um, using Proctorio. So the first thing is just a reminder list. None of these are live links. It's just a reminder list of the things you're supposed to be doing on a week-to-week -week basis. Scroll down further, general resources. Scroll down further, there are the video lectures. Yep, there they are ready for you. I have a study guide right up top. Um, and so here it says, video lectures preparing for exam one. These are the lectures that prepare you for exam one. So let's take a look at what this little, little area of the website shows. First is a study guide. Students like study guides. And then here's that 23 minute introduction lecture all about what is critical thinking. I have it in two different versions. I have it in a YouTube version, but then I also had all of the videos professionally closed captioned, which are only available on the captioning website. Um, so uh, if you like YouTube, feel free to just head over to the YouTube um, uh, website, or you can access, access the professional captioning website here. YouTube's got some captions, but they're not professionally captioned. Um, so you will need to head over to the, closed ca the professional captioning site down here if you want professional closed captions. Here are also the notes for you. Um, I have them in both PowerPoint as well as PDF versions. These are companions to the lecture. They're essentially, they reduce the amount of notes that you have to take. They, they, they don't eliminate the notes you have to take, but they definitely reduce. So that as you're watching the lecture, you can take your careful notes right there with a pre-prepared outline for you. Scroll down further. So there's an introduction lecture, and then there's an argument lecture. Again, available through YouTube, or you can go to the captioning website, and then a set of notes uh, that accompany either in PowerPoint or PDF format. It's the same set of notes, same set of notes. Another lecture, here's the values lecture, and then here is the captioned version, and then the two uh, versions of the notes. And then lastly is the deduction reasoning lecture. So the first exam, there's really four lectures that you need to watch to prepare yourself for that first exam. Um, and then below that are the course assignments. Quiz one, proctorial practice quiz, quiz two, quiz three, first forum activity with these resources that accompany the first forum activity and quiz four. And you'll notice that I've actually laid them out for you right here on the course website. Um, if you want to check what all of the assignments are, you can actually click on assignments and it'll show you the flow of assignments. Um, uh, it, it'll, it'll show you them right there. Um, and so just something to keep in mind. Um, uh, but I prefer, and I think it's much more useful to look at them on the home page because you can actually see um, how they're all related in terms of these are the these are the ones for exam one. You can see they're in chronological order and you can see that there are resources available to you to help you with the first forum activity. Scroll down and there's that first exam that's open from the 11th to the 13th. And essentially the whole class is already laid out for you. Um, although there are specific due dates, um, and as you can see, I put the due date and date, due time on every single assignment. It's like right there for you. Um, you can actually work early. Uh, if, you want, if you get done with all the stuff for exam one and you want to cruise down to the stuff for exam two and start watching the lectures and doing the um, assignments for exam two, you're more than welcome to do that. You can, you can work in advance for everything except the longer exams, um, which again are only open for a three-day period. Um, and so uh, that's the homepage, and it really everything is on the homepage. Um, I, do, uh, I do have reminders in the announcements, um, like problems with Proctorio, uh, confused about how to access the homepage. Um, I also will have uh, this uh, a daily reminder for you of everything you're supposed to be doing on a given day. Um, if you don't want to have, you can either look on the syllabus, right? Or you can um, actually just look right here in announcements and every single day I'll be posting an announcement right there. Um, here's how you access your grades. Shows you what you've been doing, shows you how well you are, how well you're doing. It will be an underestimate again. If you click on syllabus, 
you'll see here is the syllabus right here that I've just been walking you through. And then it also shows you um, a snapshot of the upcoming, um, of essentially all the, all the assignments in the class, how you can earn points. But again, what's the core component of the class? The core component of the class are these video lectures right here on the home page. Well, all righty, kids, that's the class. Again, I'm Dr. Jenny Moses. You can call me Dr. Jenny. Um, and I hope to be your guide uh, through those video lectures as well as over email or conference Zoom in this five-week winter critical thinking class. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I look forward to a fun winter.